Welcome to the 48th edition of Podcasters Today with Patrick Roland. Patrick, welcome. Thank you. Uh, please introduce yourself and your company. All right. My name is uh, Patrick Roland, uh, 53 years old, managing director and co-owner of Tyler Group. Uh, we're uh, uh, an original Benelux company that has expanded into Czech Republic and Germany. Uh, we've been in existence for almost, or no, even a little more than 30 years. Uh, we started out doing what uh, we now call document composition. So it was our first and oldest form of customer interaction. Um, but obviously we've grown into all the modern types of communication you would expect that we call customer interaction. So I sometimes jokingly say we're an old company with a young heart. That is a, a good saying. And uh, we see in the corner dialogue, digital interaction. Yep. Um, now I know you, uh, a little while ago, you purchased a uh, conversational company um, and uh, um, to take that into your group. Um, that must be part of your strategy and your vision. Uh, and I'm curious about how you see the future and how you see uh, conversational in the in the dialogue group, literally, and uh, especially in the digital interaction, because it's it's an expanding field. It's going rapidly. It's changing rapidly. So um, could you elaborate on that and explain us why your company uh, um, took that turn or that went in that direction? Yeah, first of all, I think uh, digitalization has been in our core strategy for quite some years now. Um, so from the documents we started with 30 years ago, we rapidly expanded into uh, digital forms like PDF, email, SMS, push, uh, later uh, also stuff like personalized interactive video, uh, chatbots. But we soon found out that there's a lot of troubles keeping company from achieving the desired results. So we developed a strategy called the customer interaction layer where we say it's much more important to have your data, your organization and your IT all lined up in the right way uh, and, and centralized the way you do your conversations. We saw that especially the younger generation was preferring the conversational method of interacting. Um, we didn't have that core capability in-house. Uh, so we are also a company that's really aimed at bigger companies in uh, marketplaces that are regulated, for example. So financials, uh, utilities, telcos. So this places other demands on what you would want from conversational. And the company we took over, uh, Eerste Stop, uh, literally translated first step, was very good in what we call process-driven chatbots, where you have predetermined outcomes and that then can act as a extension of your, let's say, tele uh, marketing or tele sales or tele uh, your call center. So that this makes it uh, worthwhile to us and we rebranded it as digital colleague. So we really present it as a, as a colleague that can replace some of the stuff your own colleagues would do and where a customer really can go from beginning to end uh, in a digital self-service process. So for us, the combination in acquiring a company with uh, competence and IP uh, that we didn't have yet. The fact that they excel in what we call uh, a transactional uh, type of engagements uh, that often lead to a lot less uh, confusion or, or disillusion maybe than, than with regular FAQ based chatbots uh, made us decide to, to invest in this company and we're very glad we did. Um, um, and I applaud you for it because it's uh, the amount of platforms that are out there buying uh, such a company. It's a, it's a ballsy move, <laughs> um, but strategy-wise, I, I, I totally understand it. And there's one aspect that you mentioned that I think a lot of the companies are missing, a lot of the platforms too, um, and actually the customers as well. You, you mentioned the process bots or the transactional bots. Uh, here's the thing, uh, what, what I see in a lot of chatbots and uh, a lot of the podcasts, we test the chatbot, what you see it, it gives information, but it lacks the capability to then take me to the transaction, to take me from A to Z in one happy flow. It just takes me from A to B, gets me the information, then it stops. Or I need to need a life agent or whatever. 
whereas the process usually is uh, reasonably down to earth or structured, um, and you could cut that into steps and and actually do it. And uh, and it's not being done, well, not enough at least. Um, if you look at your your current customer base or your preferred future customer base, your your, your target customers, is that something they are not doing right now and you aim to help them do that? Or is it, are you targeting a new type of customer? I think both are true. Um, as in the past, we we served a lot of tier one customers who obviously have made a lot of, uh, let's say architectural choices already. Still, we think with what we do, we can add a lot of value uh, because on the one hand, we have a lot of understanding of for example, data integration, data quality, uh, data integrity, which is forms the basis for doing that that process, as well as integrating that 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 conversation, that transition conversation, with, for example, on the fly generating uh, a personalized interactive video or a PDF that confirms the process uh, to the end customer, or well, integrated with digital signature type processes. So yes, we are firmly aiming also for some of our financial and utility telco uh, tier one customers. But with first step, we also got access to a lot of tier two customers in the financial uh, uh, business as well, where it's obviously easier uh, to to go into that discussion around a value add ROIs and where you don't run into, let's say, architectural technology choices that have been might have been made years ago uh, and where it's very difficult to to get them on board um so the combination i think of of our own ip that gives us some some advantages that we think uh not many uh, have which is first of all we have stored we call it a case manager for chatbots so we store uh as long as as needed uh, the conversation until it's finished so we have a chatbot that actually makes you if you want to go to bed in the middle of a insurance checkup, you do. And the next day you start where you left off. That's one. Um, for the customer, it means they have insight into what's happening. On the other hand, in our chat interface, we can do stuff um, like field masking and exit triggers, which makes it possible to uh, avoid a lot of mistakes, a lot of data entry errors or a lot of uh, uh, calculation errors. So again, it's squarely aimed at, at doing those those digital self-service uh, type engagements. And I think that's a strong point that we haven't seen in, in many in many platforms out there. Now that's that's a, a part of why uh, why it's interesting to, to talk to you guys because um, um, very often I see the capability of the, the transactional part and the hyper personalization because that's the other part. Um, uh, missing, and that, that's why um, you, you said chatbot, uh, digital coworker, or digital colleague. Um, it, it is somewhere in between. It's, it's everything, and it's not. Uh, it's sort of in between because I think the hyper personalization. There's not many chatbots that are are doing that, and of course, there's inherent risk. I understand the GDPR and and the cyber. Um, I presume you you've, you you manage those. Uh, properly, yes, really. but th having said that, why do you think that other companies are not um, uh, into the hyper personalization? Is that would that be because it's extremely difficult, or um, uh, um, security-wise, it's hard to manage, or what is the reason? Because um, I've seen some of your work, of course, I know it, um, and I think that that there, it's it it stands out um, compared to other chatbots it's because of the personalization uh, it, it, if you if you are in the chatbot it is about me and that's really interesting that 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 sort of pulls me in if it's not about me if it's general then you know okay it's uh, yeah yeah i, I understand you know what I mean? uh, yeah and to answer your question uh, to to obviously to my best knowledge is that a lot of the, the gen more generic uh, chatbot platforms generic toolboxes and the first use cases were mostly frequently asked question type engagements or getting intents and utterances. Yes, exactly. Um, we come from a totally different angle. We are used to communicating uh, facts and figures, 
to our customers. I mean, if if we send you a letter that has all your data into in it, including what your pension fund looks like uh, uh, yesterday, um, you run into a lot of stuff with GDPR, but also with that data having to be right. Uh, so from this from the get go, personalization has always been in our in our core vision as being a distinguished something you need if you want to be successful as a, as a company, if you want to stand out from, from your competitor. We are used to working in regulated environments and, and doing transactional types of business. Uh, so yes, we understand the disillusionment with a lot of the of the of the let's say all type chatbots that 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 all were only serving a very limited use case in, in getting questions answered. Uh, obviously, uh, we're touching with with AI and LLM. We're touching completely different uh, uh, benchmarks over there. But but with regards to our core, I think it comes from where we come from. So we look at this from our from our traditional angle, uh, where we just want to get stuff done for and on behalf of our customers, and we want to empower the customers of our customers to do that self service. And, and save a lot of money in in the in in the meantime. Um, so I think in in the end, summarizing, it's just we come from a totally different background and and brought that into into this domain. And and how hard is it to come? Well, I'm I'm suggesting now, but uh, that it is hard. Um, but um. um how hard is it for you guys since you 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 come from a different place? I know. Uh, even for people that just do chatbots and come from a <coughs> chatbot place, um, it is hard. But I can imagine if you come from um, the, the document or the the, the, the data part, um, it's a different ball game. Convincing C level executives or or uh, management or the people you talk to that hey, there, there's a next level we can do. We we can make use all that data and create a chatbot, personalized chatbot for your customers. Maybe not to replace the letters, but to add on top of the letters. And he gets a letter, maybe he scans a QR code, and then he has this personalized chatbot. It can ask any question about his personal situation. I, I can imagine for a pension fund, that could be a relevant situation. Yes, and, and um, that, that doesn't have to be a letter per se. Uh, the own IP we have, what I told you about the, the case manager, uh, we call that Flowcore. That's own IP that is also allowing you to proactively send out uh, chat links to your customers uh, and they can then choose to do that self-service process uh, at a time uh, of their own of their own choosing. Um, going back to your earlier question, um, I, I think you're right. We are not a global uh, platform yet, yet, hopefully. <laughs> Sorry, uh, we do. <coughs> we do have. Uh, a lot of explaining to do. So sometimes, because we are, we come from that different angle, it takes some more explaining uh, than than uh, just based on technology uh, trying to sell, uh, uh, let's say, a hip a hip new product. Um, but once we get into the real uh, content of the discussion, and once we are able to to do ROI type calculations for that customer, then the, the whole business case becomes a lot easier uh, to sell. So more and more of what we do is, is completely ROI driven. So we just start out with, hey, what kind of use cases do you see? And um, how can we save you money while making life better for you and your customers? And if you then look at the, the customer side, the final customer yes. side, <clears throat> Do you see that, um, of course, we've seen a shift uh, for a long time um, in companies, but also in government, moving from sending letters to doing everything digitally. So the, the PDF you would print uh, or make ready for printing uh, would now enter some digital domain and would be read uh, over there. Probably you don't do printing, so it, it's not your, it doesn't matter to you whether it's sent to a print shop or um, uh, a digital domain where, where the customer can read it. Do you think, or do you envision a situation where at some point the digital domain 
every digital domain becomes conversational or a lot of digital domains where you have a lot of information about you and as a customer you go to that domain and you basically ask questions about your situation um, but in your own language and not the difficult language a lot of the pension companies or insurance companies or banks are using unfortunately yeah yeah the fact of of of, of using language that's too difficult obviously you can't solve for that just by technology alone but going back i think you're right i see uh, the most part of convers of of customer interaction going conversation because actually it's the way we are discussing right now right it's question answer it's it's bouncing off each other um so we don't only consider uh, a, a chatbot or a conversational interface uh, as such. For example, what we do with personalized interactive video, where uh, based on business rules, you can also ask customers questions or process their input and then have the video react to that. Um, yeah, that's 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 it's a bit like a digital human. That's that's also a, a conversational interface, or or even certain smart forms, or maybe even RPA type processes can be described as such. So so I think you're right. What we see is that um, a lot of the please use my app or please keep logging into the my environment isn't always working that great. <laughs> it's it's that. <laughs> so. Um, um, so that, that, that central conversational interface where in, in their own natural language or using predetermined process, I just press a few buttons and I, I have a new insurance. I think that's that's the way everyone will go. Uh, but we see the, the three main problems we see within, especially bigger customers are lack of data, data quality, do that personalization, uh, a lot of complexity and, and existing processes in organizations that just hinder them in being innovative. And last but not least, and, and I think the Netherlands is quite uh, different from, from some of the other geographies in that is the power of IT. So IT is entrenched in every organization. And we've sometimes uh, the, the, the architect, the, the, the IT architect it could, can become your biggest enemy because he just says, hey, they rule. We, do, we are Salesforce, we are Azure, we are Microsoft, I don't care. <laughs> But that's what they say. And then they don't think about any consequence that that, that that has on their own ability to innovate or to change. Uh, this is, uh, I, I recognize <laughs> this from everywhere. Every potential and, and customer I talk to, it's the same story. Oh, we've chosen this or we have this stack. And, um, and every expert in the field you talk to, they say, they, they, they tell the same story that, that, that uh, the, the 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 tech stack decisions were were not taken by with a business vision usually or a strategic vision what are we going to do with this technology how is it going to advance our innovate innovative power etc yeah. etc et what do we actually need not now but in five years um but they usually take the decision oh we're we're a microsoft company so let's use the microsoft bot framework and not thinking about the, the organizational consequences of having the microsoft bot framework which Sort of, you need a lot of people to manage that, or external consultants. Yeah, especially same with Salesforce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all, we jokingly always say uh, there has never an, uh, been fired any IT manager that has uh, uh, chosen Microsoft as his supplier. Uh, you don't get fired for that. But in the meantime, your marketing department behind your back is using their credit card to buy all kinds of online tools. Tools you don't have any. Guilty. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> so that, that that's what's happening, and and more and more we see let's say besides cloud adoption, microservices, more and more we see uh, companies going to a more loosely coupled uh, uh, model uh, and we try to fit in that. So uh, we are also tailoring our own IP to fit in into that paradigm um, and, and uh, actively try to show that business value is more important than, than uh, let's say uh, tech stack. Uh, decisions only, uh, because if you want to change your organization, you should be flexible in any in every way. And how do you, in, in that light, how do you view? Uh, cause, uh, I think we're we're touching a very interesting point yeah. here because this is 
th th these are strategic issues uh, uh, in the boardroom. <clears throat> and, and then I think they're not being discussed enough because otherwise we would have seen different choices. Um, and they, they, they sort of lock-ins on big tech and um, it costs them shitloads of money. It, it, it makes them the, the tanker and not the speedboat, et cetera, et cetera. But how do you see the, all, all these companies, whether it's insurance companies or banks or what have you, um, and they're using a lot of SaaS solutions, yes. right? So that means their data is all over the place. Now, I talk to people and the, people are getting a bit nervous about this because especially when, um, uh, for instance, in healthcare, they have this uh, company called Epic and they, uh, they're they a huge uh, hospital system uh, supplier, American company. And they now said, oh, we're introducing open AI into our system. And that would mean that anonymized patient data goes somewhere. Um, who knows? Um, and people are starting to get a bit nervous because nobody knows anymore what goes where, what is being used for what, um, um, is it actually anonymized? What if we sort of uh, screw up uh, and it's not anonymized? What happens then? I mean, you have the biggest data leak ever. Um, so how do you view this development of, of, of these companies and all these startups being SaaS? Because that was the way to go. And now you see in terms of cybersecurity, you see sort of, well, not the opposite direction yet, but uh, you see this nervousness. Uh, you, you must know it because your company has NET and ESO certifications uh, for, cy for cyber, and you know companies are asking for that, but it's, it's, a, it's a paper security. It's, it's about what you actually do um, and not what's on paper. Um, how do you view this development or this balance or maybe imbalance even? Well, if, if you look at, let's say, some of the, the, the public platforms, uh, they are obviously some of the biggest data harvesters that there are. And, and that has caused a turmoil in, in the marketplace with, with the EU now trying to, to, to get a grip on that and, and penalizing or uh, putting up uh, regulations to, to those big tech players. If you look at the more business type uh, SaaS uh, platforms, you see more and more that there are open data standards. Uh, first of all, that companies uh, really are just demanding the data to be in their region uh, to the point of, of, of being it, it being a no-go in, in any kind, kind of, of RFP. Um, but then you still have, with four SaaS tools, you've got data in four different locations, which is where data integration technology comes in that can uh, in batch or even on demand uh, combine that data or compare that data or even improve on that data uh, by by comparing it to itself uh, for example i've got a pension system uh, and an insurance system and let's compare if if your address is still uh, the right one that's internal but you also have external uh, data I, I can check your address against a, a validated address database to see if there are no typos uh, in there so it's it's on the one hand i think on in on the business side there's good regulation in place and especially in in banks and insurance companies you don't get away with 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 loose uh, uh regulations you you need to be able to show where the data is and what you do with it and then there's i think layers of data integration, data quality that you can put in between that should feed your customer interaction because you don't want a customer seeing that on day one they get something out of Salesforce and then the next day they get something looking completely different out of SAP. You should combine that and, and, and personalize it in, in a single, uh, what we call then a, a customer interaction layer. Um, so can, can I interrupt you one thing? It's funny you should say this because um, I see tons of companies who have different products and different systems just sending out insurance companies, for instance, sending out different, uh, totally different um, letters. Um, they, they look different. The, the, the way they address me is different. It said one is dear sir, like, you know, my name. Uh, no, apparently you don't. The other one is dear Mr. Taymans. I'm like, okay, so apparently you do know my name. Um, and, and they can't get it together. It's, it's, it's impossible. Yeah. And then, it, then they get 
taken over by another company. So the new problem comes, they have to be integrated in the next system. So the, the, what I see is this, this is a, has been around for a long, long time and, and has to do with legacy systems, which they sort of can't replace. Yeah, exactly. So, so the, the solution is not, not, not always to, to try and replace everything with one single system, but put in a good layer in between that, that helps you do that. Uh, you touch a very good point. A lot of our customers, at least, are M&A type companies. They have had a lot of mergers and fusions and their IT reflects that, right? So um, th there's one other uh, thing I didn't touch with regards to, to, the, to the data thing. If I look at our own solution, what we do is we store as little personal data as we can and we don't store it uh, uh, a minute longer than we have to. So we try just to use it for the purpose of the process it is used for, obviously with encryption in transit or whatnot, um, because that's what we that's what we have always been doing, right? If if some of our people develop uh, interaction templates, um, we close a contract with the customer, say we don't want to see your real data. If we develop something for you, we we want guaranteed test data, and if you don't have it. Uh, generate it. I don't. We don't care. But we don't want to touch your production data because it's 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 the sensible thing to do. It's yeah, too exactly. Risky. We we my company can can be seriously hurt if we if we um, let's say uh, uh, have a data leak or or something like that. Yeah, but um, th that's still. Uh, I understand this. But um, 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 there's still this thing about being having a lot of data dispersed in a lot of SaaS solutions, and and uh, and on the other hand, you see companies moving to the cloud, which I consider their own server or their still SaaS, but it's it's everything together. And you see that you go to Azure or AWS, and it's like a feeding frenzy for those companies because they're selling that that storage space. Um, and, and of course, there are services on top of that. I understand that. Um, but how do you view the companies that have their data sort of scattered everywhere? And I understand you need to, the, the layer where you put, get that together. But isn't there an inherent risk of having that everywhere that at some point you don't know what is where? Like, like for instance, what Zoom did. I don't know if you realize that. Um, Zoom, for the people who didn't realize it, Zoom, for the people that have a free subscription to Zoom, Anything you say on the call is being recorded and used to train our AI. Uh, and you start thinking about it, if you have a confidential conversation um, and you're using the free version, you never thought about it, just click yes on the terms and conditions. If it's free, you're the business model. Exactly. You're, you're, yeah. if, if it's free, you're the product, not the customer. That, that's, that, <clears throat> exactly. That's so. Yeah. Well, it, it's obviously the same with ChatGPT in, in the early days. Now people are, are becoming more sensible to it, but everybody was, was putting their, their sensitive company data uh, uh, into it, trying to get something generated and, and didn't realize that that same information was going to be used to further train uh, the model. So we now see more and more interest in, in, um, in, in a lot of, uh, let's say more private type engagement. So, we still do RFPs where the company just says, I want my stuff on premise. I want it on premise. Others say, nay, I have a, I have a, a private cloud and, and you need to put it in there. Then you have public cloud, but then you, your Zoom example for me is, is one of the, let's say the public consumer type of, of solutions that, that obviously they, they, they get your data all over the place. Uh, I, I think with, with all the, uh, legislation being in place and, and the contracting and the compliance and regulation issues that if you do business with Salesforce or, or SAP in, in the cloud, um, this, this, these are, are quite big engagements. And, and trust me, you do know where your data is and what data is in there. Although from Salesforce, I know <clears throat> their data structure, it's a total disaster to work with. Um, to get access to the model, data model, and then do something with it. It's just, um, you, they, they, they build a business around it for the consultants to make a lot of money to, to, to do anything with Salesforce. Well, I, I, 
it started off as this great product. Uh, I remember in the early days I experimented with it. You could take a free account uh, or uh, $10 or something a month. And it was amazing. You could do stuff and, and do it yourself. It was still feasible. And then they started buying all these other companies and became bigger and bigger. And now they're, they're just like Microsoft or any other company, you know, they're, they're, they're all about uh, selling as much, many licenses and, and add-ons as possible, which is frustrating if you try to build a business and for every uh, breath you take in the software, you, oh, you need another add-on and the consultancy service and the hosting. Um, ka -ching, ka -ching, ka -ching. Yeah, yeah. And besides that, some of it has become their own legis le uh, legacy. Even though you're looking maybe at a at a at a web interface or even a conversational interface, yeah. the whole data structure behind it and the databases behind it and the, and, this, and most of the code behind it is still 80s, 90s, and zeros code, right? Um, I have an example with a with a insurance company, a direct insurance company. They have an ERP system specialized for insurance. We have to create invoices out of that and distribute those. Um, we get up to 1 million lines of XML just to generate one invoice and, and need specialized data software oh. to get the 50 fields we need for that invoice out of that, that blurb of, of XML. And we have to strip all kinds of stuff. So that was that, that data layer I, I meant in between. It's these these solutions are so monolithic and, and, and inflexible. Um, and yet it keeps changing as well. So if you want to, to, to be, have your customer interaction, your, 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 your conversation with your customer, if you want to have that uh, con constantly of high quality and, and with the same structure, then, then yeah, you need something in between because data is then becoming uh, your biggest Achilles heel with regards to, to offering uh, conversational quality and hyper-personalization. And how do they manage that in a contact center? If someone calls and they have to, in order to access the data, um, they have to do crazy stuff? Well, I, 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 I imagine, I, I don't know that process in, in this specific case, but um, they obviously have screens and, and where they can quickly get access to customer uh, information. The only thing is that uh, behind the scenes, the, the data structures are very, very, very complex, very complex. And that, uh, that was what I was talking about. That, that same monolithic software is not tailored for customer interaction or conversation or whatever. So you, you need to, you need to accommodate for that. And that's where, where we mostly come in. So, so basically you're allowing companies, um, that are stuck in the, in the zeros in terms of software and I have a hard time moving on. And I understand, I know how difficult it can be because of the start, the way products are structured or, or the, 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 you have products of 30, 40 years ago and they've been moved from one system to the other. So it, it doesn't get any easier. I understand that. Um, but you allow these companies to, to have conversations with their customers, despite the fact that they are um, sort of behind in their development of, of, of their software. Exactly. And what people don't realize, we are mostly at the, at the end of a long process. So if a company wants to launch a new mobile subscription type or a new type of insurance or a banking product, we are very much at the end of their, let's say, go to market or time to market process. They can only go to market. They tell you late, yeah, right? They, they can only go to market when all the customer interaction that, that needs to take place, be it a document or, or, or the, the chat sessions that, that, that need to uh, be able to serve the customer or the digital colleague that needs to be ready. Only when all of that is ready, they can launch that product into market. So that's the reason why, why you need to, uh, you need to put measures in place and, and, and where you can really earn money is by speeding up that process. Did, did you ever do a, an exercise, um, a, a calculation exercise where you um, calculated how, mu how much time you saved uh, a company or by, by doing what you do? Because my feeling is that um, um, you're, making some, you're making it sound really easy. Um, I presume it's not that easy as you make it sound. Um, because uh, the, the companies have a hard time getting their data 
right? Otherwise, they wouldn't need you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we we try um, we try to talk about it. Easy. Our tagline you can't see it all, I, I believe, but it says digital interaction made easy. Um, I think it's all about making the right choices and 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 willing in willing to put in the hard work in the preparation phase to get something ready. That's why we always talk about the customer interaction layer. And then it's, it, it becomes a lot easier to click in new communication channels. Uh, and conversational, again, like we discussed, is, is becoming more and more important in that regard. Am I hearing you say that in, in such a process, the, the prep work, the, 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 the work you do before you go live and the think work, thinking of how to do it and then actually building that part, is the most important part. Once you've done that hard work, then everything after it becomes more easy. Is, would that be a lesson, a takeaway for, for people watching this, this, this exactly. podcast? Exactly. Doing good design and, and data normalization and all that old fashioned type of hard work is, is essential uh, to getting stuff done. And uh, uh, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm hurting a lot of people's feelings by saying that doing that in an agile way is not always, in our profession, is not always the best way. Because you can't fake, you can't fake a new insurance policy and say, well, two weeks are up. Let's, uh, let's do this out, an MVP out to market and let's see what happens. I tell you something funny. L long time ago, um, uh, uh, in one of my first jobs, I, um, I had a, um, pension scheme, um, a big insurance company, I'm not going to mention the name. And uh, the insurance agent uh, sold it to my boss. It's like I was the first one in the, in the, in the collective pension and a beautiful brochure, beautiful documents to fill in. I did all the questions. Uh, in that time, even the medical yeah. exam, everything was done. I had the pension insurance. I had a confirmation. Um, um, but it was really short and didn't say anything. So I was a, a young father. So. I was in the car a lot. I'm like, yeah, if I hit a, I get into a car accident or something horrible right now, I have nothing to show for that I'm actually insured. So I'm like, yeah, this is not right. So I called the insurance agent. I said, okay, but when am I going to get the insurance policy? Because this is actually ridiculous. We've, 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 we're a couple yeah, months yeah. in now. We're paying mm -hmm. the premium, but um, I, I have no paperwork. And he said, yeah, yeah, I'll call them. And he said, yeah, yeah, they have some problems with their system. So, uh, and I'm kind of impatient. So at some point he couldn't get an answer. It took two months. Then I called the insurance company and, um, um, I called him. It's like, and I got to eventually I had the, the, the general manager of the insurance company or the CEO on the phone because I, I sort of was pushing them. And, and the person said to me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, to be honest, we built a system where we can make the offers. So the, the, the pre-calculation. So how much premium you would have to pay. We made the brochure. We made all the documents, but our backend system is not ready yet. <laughs> and it might take another yeah. year. Uh, and I, and the only question I asked was like, but am I insured now? Because how do you administrate the fact that I'm insured? Yeah, we have an Excel sheet. I'm like, oh, this cannot oh, be true. Yeah. So, um, um, I'm not going to mention the name because regulatory wise, this wasn't the way to get long ago, but, but still, um, but then I said, you know, listen, I I'm going to get that policy, whether you have to type it in word, I don't care. Have your secretary made it. I need a confirmation by the board that I'm insured and what is insured because we are paying. Um, and literally the, um, the, um, uh, the secretary of the, the CEO, uh, made the insurance policy for me uh, and I got it through the agent. But it was a, if you think about it, it's, it's a horrible story, but it's exemplary for how it went in the old days. And then they built a system, but usually they didn't build it right. Then with add-ons and add-ons, and that's what you're working with. It's the result of all that misery. And that certain insurance company was no different from any other oh, insurance exactly. company, and, by the way. The, the funny thing you say, that this has not been pre pre-discussed, so, but Actually, the use case you're discussing is our main demo where we show what we can do. Uh, where you on, on a smart form, or we could also do it via, via a, a conversational interface, take out uh, take out a car insurance. So it interfaces with uh, databases where you can see the value of your car. You can enter all kinds of personal information. Based on business rules, you see what 
uh, what the amount of, of insurance money you have to pay per month. And when you click, a my environment gets generated, a, a the chatbot becomes personal, a PDF is generated that shows that you are insured now. It's been it, it's sent to you automatically via email, and a personalized interactive video is generated that shows you again what your insurance is, that it's your insurance, but also in that video gives you uh, uh, the possibility to view some of the other types of insurances. For example, uh, you want to go uh, from a little bit less to all risk. You can you can click in the video and see, hey, this what, what is the difference with all risk? And inside that video, you can click on all risk. And and then the process repeats. You get a new email saying, hey, you just changed your insurance. Uh, you're now all risk insured. And this is your new uh, 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 policy and, and your new amount per month. And then we use conversational interfaces just in the demo to report any damage. So if you've got damage, we know who you are, right? So you can just say, yes, it's this car. Yes, it was an accident. And if we would want, we could build out the whole European uh, damage form. form. For it to be, and so yeah. you can you could be standing next to your burning car or smoking car and, and with six <laughs> clicks uh, uh, do that damage. But also we use a conversational interface to do a quick errors change. Or uh, even if you can't pay your premium, we have a little example using a digital colleague where uh, it, it uh, actually allows you to do payments, but also get into a conversation where you get offered a payment arrangement. So, okay, you can't pay the 200 euros. Uh, what about uh, five months or 40 euros? Uh, uh, so, so it's just a demo, but it shows that if you have the data, the data end and the data interfacing and normalization right, you know, where is what? then the customer interaction can be done uh, well, almost fully automatic. Basically, it's limitless. Yeah, and, and on the channel of, of the customer's preference, if you, if you want an SMS for validation purposes, if you want ideal links in your chatbot, if you want explanatory... Uh, for the international listeners, Ideal is oh, sure, yes. a, a, a Dutch system for uh, payments, uh, uh, interactive payments, basically. Yeah, but any uh, any payment um, interface, the they obviously all now have APIs, so you can you can do that quite easily. And I think that's the that's the whole the whole business. That's why we say digital interaction made easy. It's about uh, thinking from the customer in instead of from from the company out. So if you could redesign, um, and you're by origin a techie, right? Yeah, yeah, but oh, I'm, I'm not, yeah. Long, long time, time ago? Yeah, yeah, started about program. But programming. you are a techie, and that never Still leaves. Still a boy. <laughs> well, exactly. So uh, that started off with, like you, you said, I can see the, the battery charge of my uh, earbuds uh, on my phone, <laughs> right? And, uh, and then you couldn't. And he said, oh, but I have an app on my computer. But but going back to that, if you were able to uh, have a blank pa piece of paper, say, okay, if I could redesign the way we, we build systems now, right? Um, um, systems that, that uh, obviously have a transaction somewhere uh, and you need to store data and that data needs to be usable for conversational experiences or interaction with customers. Uh, I, maybe that's even better for a dialogue. Um, how would you how would you design it? Uh, going back to it, um, one of my main software suppliers, uh, whose name I shall not mention here, but uh, I, I think that sounds like no, Harry yeah, Potter, yeah, yeah, yeah. whose name exactly. shall not be mentioned. Uh, but they they uh, they have adopted, I think, the strategy that that I would recommend to anybody. They they made a firm choice. To, to to cloud enable to no to go cloud native to um, make everything API accessible to use as much of the cloud platforms standard functionality to to bounce off as, as they can microservices um, and then obviously uh, and, and there have been a lot of a lot of uh, attempts in the past look at look at some kind of data standards per 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 sector you know with with the unified business uh, language and stuff like that so i think that the 
uh, uh, SaaS is here to stay, cloud is here to stay, cloud native is here to stay, APIs, microservices and, and, and data standards. But that would be an ideal word, world. We have never encountered a green field ever with any company. So what I mentioned earlier in between, what, what we mentioned as, as customer interaction layer, you, you would all, almost certainly always need uh, something in between to, to be able to become consistent uh, and personalized to your, to your end customer. I understand, but, but the, the, the thought occurred to me, that the, the reason yeah. I asked this question is, if you are able to basically normalize the data, which you do for mm -hmm. a lot of companies, um, and they have trouble normalizing their data, basically going to a, a, a better system because it's hard to normalize their data. But if you're already doing that, why don't they ask you to normalize all their data and then transfer that in a system that can actually handle it so um, that the, they can use it for conversation? Your business would change, I understand, um, but I think you, you're very capable of doing that, pivoting if needed. But I think that that would be a big, um, I would say it would open up a big space for innovation for these companies because right now they're, they're sort of stuck. Um, they, they need to spend a lot of money to basically to, to stay maintain, in business yeah. and to keep, keep their systems yep. afloat. That's one thing. And then they need to spend another, uh, uh, a lot of money to, to do something yep. with their data. Either they have data science departments within their companies or they use companies like yours. Um, and for everything they do, imagine for every invoice you have to send that 5% of the cost of the invoice goes to a lot of services you need in order to be able to actually send the invoice, to create the invoice. That if you think about it, that, that sort of bites out of your bottom line. It, it does, it does. Uh, and I'm not a data scientist, but, but yes, uh, getting that data accessible is, is one of the most important things if you want things done right. There's one other aspect I, I, I'd like to mention, and we, we based our vision that in, after discussing with a lot of uh, uh, big financial and, 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 and let's say communication and data intensive companies is we look at cost per cost per communication and the scale at which you can do it. So what we mostly say, I once talked to an insurance company who said 80% of all the traffic to my call center is being generated by the stupid communications we first send out ourselves. <laughs> so they wouldn't. So they keep themselves yes, we in send business. Out a new policy, or we send out invoice, an invoice <clears throat> run to a million people. They they would hire extra people in their in their in their call center for the for the next days. So we say you start out with making your communications hyper personalized, understandable, and to to avoid any questions. That's the cheapest way to do it. And you can do it at scale. I can send out 10 million, 10 million emails in, in an hour if I need to. After that, you say, okay, there, there's still going to be questions, but you don't want people picking up the phone immediately because th those people will cost you, let's say, 60, 60 bucks an hour. So in between, we then say, don't go to a frequently asked type chatbot because everybody will get disappointed. No. Offer, like we do with the digital colleague, offer digital self-service capabilities so that Let's say everybody knows their top 10, top 20 um, self-service stuff that you could do. Close out an extra insurance, change my address, make it easy, make it a good beginning to end process with a good confirmation and an understandable process to the end customer that cannot go wrong. Only if that's not available anymore, then you go to, let's say, the, the FAQ type chatbots. And, and that's where I think AI is really going to make a difference. And then we say only after that, uh, and that in all steps of this journey, if people get frustrated, please do not hide yourself uh, behind your website or your chatbot. Or hide the you, phone number. Yeah, exactly. There, we, we always say, put in a button in your, in your chatbot that says, call me now, or I want to speak to somebody. And then obviously, would first would want to do it with chat, uh, live chat because that's asynchronous. It's cheaper, and and you can handle multiple sessions at once. But if uh, a 78 year old person uh, or even a 22 year old person just needs to speak to somebody, it can be an emotional thing. 
it can be where, where he or she is in her customer uh, uh, journey, you need to be there. But by putting the pyramid in front of it with logical steps, being on the channels that a customer needs, you can do it at a, at a, at a, uh, at a cost effective manner and still be very customer friendly. There's one thing about the live chat I want to say about this. For a few customers, um, um, I got transcripts of the live chat to see if we could turn that into uh, FAQ yeah, yeah. bots or, or what have you. Yeah, but I, 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 I took the time to read through them and I was literally, literally in shock um, by um, two or three things. Uh, the first one was... Um, the, the writing capabilities of the people uh, behind the live chat. Uh, I wasn't sure it was Dutch the half of the time. I, I really couldn't make out no proper. It was like people, they were uh, texting uh, or, or, or sending a WhatsApp or someone sending a full sentence with a question and then a, a just a yes or a no or um, uh, th that normally that would suffice. But this was these were questions that needed an answer with context. I was like, how can you possibly um, um, uh, answer like this? It's not going to make it any clearer for the customer. It's going to be pissed and he's going to call. Um, so y you have not achieved anything. Um, the second is that um, half of the time the answers were wrong. And then it's, it's say, oh, um, I checked with someone else and it turns out to be a little bit different. So in the conversation, they came, gave answer A and then the, 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 the yeah. customer asked, are you sure? So oh, I'll check. And then he wasn't sure after all. And I was shocking that, that it was shocking that if you look at that and the cost of that, <clears throat> forget about the customer for a second, just the internal cost of that. You're having all these people that are really not interested in what they're doing. And it's just, okay, I'm doing just a thing. Um, I, I found that really shocking. I said, there's, there's no way we can do anything with automation with this because it's, it's garbage in. Um, it'll produce the same garbage you put in. Um, you need, need a different approach. Um, but I was in shock uh, by that. And I can imagine if you're on the customer end, it is really frustrating that, uh, you've tried a chatbot. It couldn't give you the answer. You go to a live chat. Uh, it got even worse. And then in despair, you want to call someone and they don't give you the phone number. Well, yeah, I, right? I, I, I feel uh, you. So, I feel you. And, and <clears throat> um, being customer friendly uh, means that people have feelings, you know, and that, that's not to, to become to become soft. But customer, you can be in, in the green on all your KPIs and still you get a mad customer because he, he didn't feel hurt. Uh, um, the other thing is, At first, I don't know a lot of people who work there who work there for 10 years. Uh, so Especially it's constantly training center. new people, constantly training new people. And uh, there are there are a lot of good people out there. But like you say, also, it, it's very dependent on the person you had. So if you can put stuff in a more regulatory type thing, especially when it's about, let's say, your mortgage, you don't want to get wrong information. You want you want. Nope. Your your chat to or your conversation, uh, either it be a process with digital self service that brings you to the right end, and that takes into account all the steps in the process, or if it's something like more FAQ type, you want it to be based only on official information, which is the reason why why we're looking uh, uh, at at let's say how can you incorporate do do AI. LLM type chat technology, but have it only be based on on uh, let's say the documents that are are validated, and that that it that, that you all that no, it's not going going to hallucinate to the outside world, and that's something we are really interested in and looking uh, at as well. Yeah. Uh, I, I can imagine, and and I imagine a future where you integrate that kind of technology with uh, your other systems where you can have a structured conversation and an AI based conversation yeah. all in one. Yeah. So, so you, you naturally yeah. progress in a pyramid I said by you receive that communication. Uh, you first try to do a, a bespoke process bot. Then you go into, uh, uh, let, let's say the, uh, the, the AI type engagement where you, re where you really get qualitative information 
Uh, only then you escalate to live chat. And, and if you then still don't get your answer, only then you escalate to call center. And uh, I have a customer, uh, for example, uh, did, uh, did a session with them last week. They have a 1200 person call center. Imagine being able to save 10 wow. or 20% there. That's huge savings. That validates a lot of investment in, in the right technology. Well, imagine not having to train. Uh, I don't know what the turnaround is of the, the staff. 30, 40% probably yeah, who knows? yearly. I wouldn't be surprised. Imagine not having to train that many exactly. people. Exactly, yeah. That would... Um, I, I hope they lower their cost for the, the price yes. for the customers <laughs> because they have less cost. Not yeah. going to happen, I know, but uh, it's, it's just a thought. Um, w one last thing. If you, um, if you look at your business mm -hmm. right now and y you guys have a strategic vision, you're acting on it and, and, and uh, you keep on building. Uh, uh, the story stays the same, but the technology start mm -hmm. is changing. That's actually what I, what I see. Um, and, and that's a good way of doing business because uh, you believe in 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 the the strategic thought that that sort of is above everything. Um, if you look five years ahead or ten years ahead, uh, I don't know. I, I don't even know if we can look five, ten years ahead. But uh, let's say if you could look five years ahead, uh, what is your business? What are you doing differently from what are you doing now? What you are doing now? So uh, l let me explain. I, I once talked to a guy. He was the chief innovation officer of some uh, software company and he was, he had a team of people and he was only innovating, building new stuff with new technology. And he said, um, we're, we're, we have five innovations a year. We know one yeah. of them is going to be successful. Um, but we know part of our business, 20% of what we do now in two, three, four years of time, it's going to be dead. So what we do is we start, we try to figure out what it is that will replace that part of our business. Um, and that's actually the, the question, what I'm asking you, Wh what do you see changing or, or leaving the premise and, and, uh, what new stuff would you be doing? Would you like to be doing or would you envision yourself doing not you yourself, but your company, yeah. of course. Well, I think it, our tagline says says a lot. I I think in in a few years, uh, uh, the jokes about uh, a paperless office is is as uh, probable as a paperless toilet. Uh, that that joke won't hold up any longer. I I really see companies going full digital. We're on the on the on the brink of that, especially with 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 the generational shift. I see new channels maybe coming up uh, that we might not know about yet. Um, Conversational will be will remain really important because it's the natural way, like we started out this conversation, it's the natural pay, way people communicate, right? Um, I think AI will, after crossing the hype cycle, uh, land on its feet and land in 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 good bespoke uh, business cases. But before we are there, there's a lot of legisl legislative compliance uh, related uh, stuff to be done, uh, not mentioning ethical and, and all kinds of other uh, uh, stuff, but we will, I, I'm sure we will get there. Um, I think um, uh, my company will survive because we always think from the customer in and because we try to bridge that gap between this complex uh, uh, corporate type or, or, or mid-tier uh, uh, data intensive communication intensive organization and here Mr. Simple Customer like I myself that just wants stuff to get done and who just wants to know what his energy bill looks like or who just wants to close out a new insurance and bringing that together that will that will never change um, so I, I think we'll have a role in that and we'll be Fast followers. We, we're not big enough to be the the, the 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 innovators constantly running on the edge, but we'll be fast. We'll be faster than, in general, our custom our customers can can move. So we'll be able to to advise them on on where to go. Um, and commercially, I, I hope uh, we will become less and less of a best kept secret. <laughs> 
One interesting thought about that, or um, uh, mm-hmm. question actually I have, um, are you running into these long sales cycles uh, where the decision, internal decision processes in, in the, the big corporates is, um, is long, longer than you would want? Um, and I know you're, you're a commercial guy. Um, uh, and, and I know if you run a company, then patience sometimes is having patience is really hard, because you know you have people on the payroll. You need you know keep the faith. Um, yeah. so, uh, uh, is there a way? Keep the sorry? faith. Yeah, always. No, no, I, I have the faith, and I, I I agree with your vision. But uh, the the thing is, and and I hear everybody in the business saying the same thing: the sales cycles are so incredibly long. And by the time they, they take the decision, the technology is already advanced. Uh, we're, we're, basically, we can start all over. And, and um, um, so somehow these big corporations are creating their own disadvantage by being slow in decision making. Has to do with the budgeting processes. I understand all of that. I've been in the big corporates, but you know, it, it, it sort of they, they're creating their own. Yeah. Problem. Well, I. I, I... I see that trend as well, whereas in the past you could do maybe a six month engagement. And now we see easily 12, 18, 24 month sales cycles. Um, a lot of it has to do with the way we think here in, in the Benelux, because some of my American uh, vendors, that they, they find it hard to comprehend that stuff here has to go through a purchasing board, an architecture board, a change management board. Compliance uh, board. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Legal board. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. The board yeah. And board. Then, and then, yeah, why can't I just talk to the CEO? Well, they don't decide. There's all these committees who decide. He just puts in his signature wherever we tell him to put his signature. Um, so that, that's on one end. It, it, and compliance, obviously, and risk averseness, especially in the regulated industries, has got a lot to do with that. Um, but it, I don't want to generalize. There are still mid-tier and top-tier companies doing a lot of good stuff and really trying to to innovate. Um, um, and mostly they do it, well, let's say, by 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 going business case by business case and, and not being afraid um, to go for that loosely coupled uh, cloud-driven uh, solution that they can just integrate in, into their way too complex back office. This is a, a, a nice bridge for a, uh, a short announcement we have, because um, um, Patrick and I have been talking for a while, and um, um, the sales cycle thing is, is, is one of the topics. But, but we felt that, uh, especially in financial services in the Netherlands, um, um, something needs to happen. And uh, um, we felt we can contribute by starting a, uh, a broadcaster series specifically for the financial services in Holland um, to figure out how to advance uh, financial services, m- maybe make it more innovative, uh, more conversational. And we're, we're, we're taking a journey together uh, to do this. So um, um, in the, the next couple of months, you will see the first results of that. And um, I'm, I'm really happy uh, and thank you for the confidence that we're, we're going to do this together. And um, I'm happy. Yeah, so are um, we. I think, uh, like I said, we have a lot of experience in this in this marketplace, but we also keep on learning. So it'll be my pleasure to introduce some of my colleagues and some of our thought process into this, but obviously also learn from some industry uh, figures and uh, uh, by conversing with you and and, and others uh, create a, of a learning learning community maybe uh, where we where we all are able to progress the marketplace a little bit, a little bit further, and um, let this be our little investment in, into that, into that, uh, into that process. And again, I, I look forward to uh, to working with you on that. Yeah, thank you. Because because one of the conclusions and and one of the things podcast is about is about sharing knowledge, basically educating, um, and, and that's what we hope to do to to educate and help the boardrooms become more knowledge, knowledgeable um, and use that knowledge to enhance decision making faster, better, um, and be more innovative where possible um, and understand where to ask help, ask how to ask for help. And sometimes the knowledge is in the organization, they just don't know. So uh, that's the idea. If you have uh, one last advice for our, our listeners, for other other 
CEOs or or uh, managers in in companies like yourselves, uh, like like Dialog Group or platform owners, what would you advise them to um, on how to run their business or or um, to strategize? Because you guys are, are are busy. That that's that's a big thing. I know thinking ahead, taking your time to 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 look what the market is doing, what your customers need. Um, uh, you're very externally focused, which is good. Um, and I see a lot of the platform owners being internally focused. So, it's the, 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 and eventually they get stuck. So, what would your besides being externally focused? What would your advice be to them? Well, to to all the companies that are doing great stuff with looking at their NPS, uh, look at also at your customer effort score because that's where you see how many how much effort it really takes for your customers to do business with you. And just don't be afraid to pick up, pick out a customer journey or a business case and experiment um, uh, and fail fast and, and learn from it and use that as a change agent in, inside your company uh, and use it as a proof of concept that it can be done in a much shorter time than you think, uh, thereby uh, upgrading your, your, your customer uh, experience. And you can do that, Agile. That's that you can do, Agile. Yeah. That's one of the things you can do, Agile. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Uh, Patrick, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to our cooperation, um, and we'll keep the market uh, updated on that. Um, thank you very much, and um, well, see you soon. Yeah, let's make digital interaction easy. Bye bye. Hey, let's do that. <laughs>